I'm going to win a national championship, but I'll be using the Idaho Vandals, playing our games in the Kibbe Dome, and I'm only recruiting prospects from Oregon, Idaho, and Washington. I'll also be using the base NCAA football game, and our first step to winning a championship is fixing this roster, which is only a 63 overall. There were a lot more independent schools back in 2013, and I'm probably taking over the worst college at that time, so I thought it would be fun to schedule teams you don't see in the updated game. The most important thing for me to do will be redshirting all of these freshmen so we can use them later on down the line. And it looks like there is nothing in this program that has a high rating, so I'm gonna have to work on getting all of these things upgraded. In this state of Idaho, there are actually some four-star recruits that look pretty good, which was surprising to me. And now I'm just gonna have to go through and scout all of these players and hope that some of them actually end up being okay. Our first game is against our rivals, Washington State, but it has gone so terribly for us that I would like to just skip right over this one. Back to recruiting now, and I actually found a gym and athlete, JP, Robinson. And we also have a chance at landing this four-star safety out of Washington. I have all of these players on the recruiting board that we're going to be targeting. And since it's the first year, I think it's smart to sim to about mid-season since we're not trying to win anyways. It looks like we landed a few commits during that time period, but we still haven't won a single game. We haven't gotten either of the 79 overalls to commit, but we're beating out Nevada and UCLA for both of them. So in my mind, what we should do is schedule all of them for a visit against FCS Northwest. This is the first time we have an even matchup and we need to win while passing for over 250 yards. With two minutes left in the third quarter, we are trailing by 10 points. But I have to step in to save the day, and we are going to deliver a dot. Getting the right result could end up changing the course of this dynasty, and with two minutes left, a money drive could end up saving our season. I'm going to be looking for Avery on this corner route, and it looks like it might be a cover three. They ended up locking up. I got the throw away, but this is a massive third down, and the slant underneath is going to be wide open to Jones. All of the visiting recruits are expecting a win and R1 is open. It goes to the wrong receiver, but that's not going to matter. Assuming this result holds, we're going to get so many different players to commit to the school. That's going to be an interception and Idaho gets their first win of the year. Patrick Smith also went over 250 passing yards, so it should be no surprise that the 279 overall recruits ended up committing to the school. By the end of the year, we might have gone 1-11, and but I somehow ended up signing the 18th best recruiting class in the country. I have no clue how because all these guys are just from Idaho, Oregon, and Washington, and we weren't good, but look at all the future stars that might be on this team. And it turns out that 72 overall athlete Antonio Robinson makes for a great quarterback. I am going to end up putting JP at wide receiver, and I'm excited for year two because the Idaho recruiting class might be the best one that's ever come out of the state. I am glad to say we jumped six overalls in the offseason, but it'll probably still be a long year for our freshman QB. That's why I'm mainly just going to focus on recruiting again, and this class has a lot of deep beast that should commit. So far, we've won two of our first six games, which is actually abnormal for us. And now it's time for the Battle of Idaho against Boise State, where I'm going to schedule every single one of these potential prospects to visit, and hopefully we're going to come away with the big win. There's a 640 point bonus if we're able to, and the Kibbe Dome would go wild if we can pull this off. This is my first time using Antonio Robinson, and I have to say, so far, he's been a little inaccurate, but the reason we have him out there is because of his speed, so I might as well use it, and let's see if he can take off and get us on the board first here. I'm excited to see how well he ends up developing and to end the first half. I'm going to go for the lead. I'm going to sling it to the end zone and he is going to moss him. So we have a four point lead at the end of the half. I've been trying my hardest to get defensive stops and I think it's going to pay off as JP Robinson catches the touchdown here. I'm even going to go for two because I want to have a two possession lead, but we're not going to get it. So we're going to need to get a stop on defense instead. And is this our quarterback right there as a safety? I mean, we're going to get the stop and after running out the clock, we're going to get the win. Beating our rivals is absolutely massive because it has led to all of these players committing to the Idaho Vandal. Now we ended up finishing the year 4-8, which means we're not going to make a bowl game, but Antonio Robinson was just starting to develop, and I gotta say, I think this team has a very bright future, especially J.P. Robinson, the freshman. I even got offered a new contract, and there wasn't a single player that wanted to transfer out of the program. Now our recruiting class wasn't as good as last year's, but it did make the top 40, and in the long run, this is going to help out our defense a ton. Multiple players came out of the offseason with a higher overall than 80, and with this schedule, this might be the first year that we're actually able to end up making a bowl game. There are also multiple players straight out of Idaho that I hope we can keep in the state, and I'm expecting we get a win in our opener. It's against an FCS school, and we win by three. This recruiting class could actually end up being our best one, but all of these guys that we are on the board for, we're going to end up having to actually 
compete for this season. And since our team overall only went up by two, along with the fact that we're going to lose at Boise State because their running back has just been insane, we might be in for a long year. So I'm just going to focus on recruiting again. I've literally scheduled everyone for week 11 against Air Force, but by then we had unfortunately lost out on Alex Hall and OJ Johnson locked us out. So at least I can say there's still good news because look at all of these players that ended up committing along with Matt Johnson, the 76 overall middle linebacker and Robert Guerrero. Additionally, at this point in the year, we are somehow sitting at five and four. So if we beat Air Force, we're going to make a bowl game. It's almost halftime and nobody's scored yet. So I'm going to roll out with Antonio Robertson and he's going to find JP Robinson. Clearly last year's recruits have made all the difference because it is the fourth quarter and they still haven't scored, but they still have a chance to do so here on fourth and three. Come on, boys. Let's get the stop. We do. Obviously, this has not been a great offensive game, but a win is a win. And all of our sophomore players still have plenty of time to develop. That result alone caused the first five star to ever commit to the program. And Robert Thomas can pretty much play anywhere. I'm also hoping we can hold on to get Brian Boyd. And we'll find out if we get him soon. But first, we have a bowl game. And it's going to be the Beef O'Brady's one against North Texas. Antonio Robertson didn't have as good of a season, but I think it's because he got injured at some point. And if you look at the rest of the offensive stats, it hurt everybody as J.P. Robinson didn't even go over 500 yards. I do think it's important we beat the Mean Green though, and with four minutes remaining, we're going to need a miracle, so I'm just going to sling it, and it's going to be an underthrow that's going to be picked off. That honestly should have been a touchdown, but we're going to have to live with it, and a comeback is still possible as we have the ball with a minute and a half left. J.P. Robinson is going to be wide open, and I'll go ahead and punch it in with Neil Wade. We're going to need three defensive stops to get the ball back, though, and their running back is very good. All I really can do is run commit and hope for the best. Sanders is not going to be able to make the tackle, though, and we're going to lose our ball game to North Texas. At least the program's still improving each year, and we got our first transfer request, but he's a 44 overall, so I'm going to have to politely decline. In the last week of recruiting, I'm just going to put all of our points on Brian Boyd, and that guaranteed we landed him, along with the 30th best recruiting class in the country. For just getting prospects out of Idaho, Oregon, and Washington, I am very happy with how this one turned out. And five-star Robert Thomas is going to make for an amazing wide receiver. If you remember me recruiting Caleb Leonard, he is now an 89 overall, and we were a 77 overall team going into year four. Besides Philip Young and a couple of players that will only play special teams, this upcoming recruiting class was not looking good, so we needed to get results on the field, and we started off with a win. Our next game was against UConn, who was ranked. So I thought it made sense to hop into this one, and so far, that was paying off. With three minutes left in the fourth quarter, we still had a 10-point lead, and I doubt this result will get us ranked, but it'll at least put the country on notice. Our junior quarterback was really starting to elevate his game, but unfortunately, we'd still drop one of our next two against UMass. There won't be many recruiting updates because it's literally just a terrible class, and I'm going to schedule the rest of these guys for our game against Boise State this week just to get the rest of it out of the way. Our rivals are undefeated, so beating them won't be easy, but it could be a huge statement for Vandal football, so I'm going to try my best. It looks like we are going to get onto the board first, and so far the defense has done a great job. We're locking up on third down. That should be a pick, but that's okay because we've still had a really solid first half. With about two minutes remaining, we still have a lead, but it's only three points, so we need to pick up this third down. I don't really see anybody open. I'm just going to try sling to the end zone, and look at that. Sean Wade makes the play of the century. We have really had Boise State's number these past few years, and and they are going to take a field goal here to bring it within one possession. But as long as we recover the onside kick, we're going to end their undefeated season and we just need to go down with Wilson. The program is making a huge turnaround, but it's still kind of hard to tell because all of these are still really low grades for our school. I mean, at least as a coach, I've been getting a lot better, but I still think we're years away from championship contention. So this result against Stanford's really thrown me off. We are five and one going into the second half of the year. And there's only a couple games on the schedule that I think could give us some issues. We're even receiving top top 25 votes. And I think if we can beat Old Dominion at their place, we're going to end up actually making it there, but we're going to lose by 11. That's an unfortunate result. So I'm just going to take us to the end of the year. And before I show you all our final record, I'm going to note that Antonio Robinson had a low passing year, but he did rush for almost 700 yards. And I'm guessing JP Robinson is going to be the best receiver in Idaho history. And that was enough to make this bowl against San Diego State. Since we lost last year's, I'm hoping that we can go out and actually win this one. But so far, I'm not going to lie. It hasn't gone too well for us. 
us as they're scoring again. So to end the first half, we really do need to get on the board and that's going to take a lot of lasers. Unfortunately, I did just notice that our starting quarterback's out for the game with a concussion, but the backup's doing just fine. And maybe Antonio Robertson won't be missed. With about a minute and a half left, we're trying our hardest to actually take a lead on this drive, but it's fourth and six. So we have to pick this up. And I think the slant underneath is open and Anthony Gray is getting closer and closer to leading us to our first bowl game win. I'm sure Idaho has won some in the past, but it had to have been a long time ago. And with 11 seconds left, the pressure is on, but there's someone open. That was almost a game ending interception. And I have to be extremely careful here. I want to go for it if we don't pick this up. Why did he lob that ball? And we don't have any time for overtime. I'm going for this. The corner route is hopefully going to create separation. He holds on to it. And Robert Thomas comes away with a game winning play. That was a risky call, but we've won our first ball and all of the players are loving it. They keep giving me new contracts, so I'm going to be around forever here, but we're losing a lot of good players this off season. So next year might be a little bit of a setback. Obviously the incoming recruiting class isn't anything special at 53, but we got our punter and kicker for the future along with the safety we wanted and a lot of other players that could be used for depth. So I can't complain too much, especially since we have 392 overall pluses going into next year. Being an independent school, I could schedule nobody, but because of the time, only the top two teams make the championship. So I have to give us a hard schedule if we want any chance at it. And I did think it was going to be a down year, but I did realize that all of these guys are seniors. So this might be our best chance at one yet. The quality of player that comes from Idaho is also starting to increase by quite a bit. And Oregon has a five star that I really want because he runs a 4-3-6-40. Recruiting out of these three states ended up not being that challenging. And if we end up getting all of these guys that I want, this recruiting class will be insane. We ended up starting the year with four pretty easy wins. And that was enough to be ranked in the top 25 for the first time ever. Hopefully we keep the streak going against Washington State, our rivals. We are at home. We double their score. And right now we have a lead on everybody, but it's pretty slim. So I'm going to schedule every player for our game against LSU. And as long as we beat Boise State, we will be undefeated going into that one, which we're going to be. That got us to be ranked as the second best team, which makes absolutely no sense. And our first true test is against a team that's seven overalls better than us. I'm not quite sure why LSU agreed to come to the Kibbe Dome, but they're definitely the better team. So if we could hold them to three here, that would be huge. And their quarterback just threw it a little too far. The first half has seemed pretty even so far. It has been hard to come by points, but we are moving it here and Neil Wade is going to get another eight yards. He's honestly been so solid for us and I am going to feed him here on this third and five. We need the halfback screen to work out. His speed is not going to get him anywhere though. So hopefully our freshman kicker can nail this. He has 94 kick power and it is going to be good. Every possession matters, but with a quarter remaining, each one matters a little bit more and LSU is going to attempt the kick here, but there's no way that was ever going in. We have a chance to take a two possession lead here. We got to take advantage of it and I'm going to be looking for JP Robinson here. The flat is covered. I'm going to take the slant instead and Thomas with the one handed grab. What was that? Evidently he is quite the receiver and in the end we are going to take down the Tigers remaining undefeated. So we actually have a shot at the championship. No matter what happens, I think we're going to be a top 25 program for the next few years because of how many good recruits are committing and I can't believe we haven't gotten max attendance yet. Alabama being a 99 overall is scary, but I'd say this is our last true test. We're on the road, which doesn't make it any easier. And Antonio Robertson's going to need to step up because he also wants to get drafted at the end of the year. Our first drive has honestly gone pretty well. He's going to escape the pocket here and throw it to Thomas for the touchdown. So how about that? And then on defense, we're getting in the hole, but he still gets the first. That is very unfortunate. We're going to get in there again, though. And on third and eight, I'm hoping we can get a stop. Everyone's in man-to-man -man coverage. Their quarterback throws it up. This should be an interception. And you know what? I'll take getting the ball back. It's going to be a defensive battle. But with three minutes left in the second, Alabama's offense has come alive. It is not easy to match. They've played a great game, but we have a good running back. And if we can't hold on the balls, I'm not sure how we're going to be able to score here. And I'd love to tie it up going into the half, but I think we're going to end up having to take our three here unless Wade pulls off the miracle. I'm hoping they don't kill our championship hopes. But since I haven't been able to get us on the board in a long time, I think that's what's going to happen. That's an interception. And fortunately, it will still be at least a two possession game. A comeback won't be easy, but it's also not impossible. And I see nobody open. There's a guy on me. I'm going to go in the end zone. And I think Alabama is going to give us our first loss. This is so unfortunate, but you know what? We're going to get our revenge next year. After that loss to the Crimson Tide, we'd fall off losing three of our next four. And that's because two of our best players ended up getting season ending injuries. Antonio Robertson never went for over 3000 yards. And I hate that we're going to be losing him along with Neil Wade and JP Robinson, whose best year was his freshman 
freshman year. In our bowl game against Pitt, we're gonna go out and we're actually gonna win, but for how well we started, 9-4 and four isn't great. Antonio Robertson didn't even end up getting drafted, but on the bright side, I landed us this monster of a tight end and the super fast halfback I wanted, getting us the second best recruiting class in the country. 70 overall athlete Chris Jackson ends up being a 78 overall wide receiver, and I know we lost a lot of good players, but this team is pretty much as good as last year's. I went ahead and put Alabama on the schedule so we can hopefully get revenge against them, and we're a 90 overall this year, which is our best rating yet. Obviously, we won our first game, and I'm also expecting us to take down New Mexico State, which we're gonna do by 10. So going into the Bama game, we're as ready as we're ever gonna be. The weather is not looking great, and that unfortunately favors Alabama's play style. It is fourth and goal, though. We're gonna shoot the gap, and no one stops him. So we fall behind by seven early, and we haven't had much success yet, but hopefully that changes on this drive. Woods is gonna shed off two tackles before going down, and we're so close to getting into the end zone. That's gonna be a dot, but Thomas does not hold on to it, and I'm pretty sure that's the player that had the one-handed grab last year. I'm kind of surprised he couldn't catch that one, but we're still gonna get into the end zone, except we're not because the rain is killing us. Apparently scoring a touchdown just wasn't meant to be, but we're still in the game. It's third and seven here. We should just get a tackle, hold them to three as well, and of course he somehow gets in. Alabama might legitimately be our kryptonite. I know our team is not that good yet, but everything has seemed to go their way so far, and this is probably an interception. I'm glad it's not, but I still don't see us winning this game, especially when no one's blocking. I don't know why that lineman's not doing anything, and it happened again. For the second time in a row, 61 is just let him run right by. And I don't care if he's an 84 overall because he is not seeing the field again. We should have gotten points before the half, but now it's not likely. This is a dot though. Honestly, the fact that it is 14 to six is great, but with five minutes left in the fourth quarter, we still have not scored again. I think we are gonna get into the end zone here, but we still need a lot more. Well, with about two minutes left, all hope is not lost yet. We still need to get into the end zone and then get another stop. But I've locked in and I believe it's a real possibility. Off of the halfback screen, we're gonna score. And all we have to do is hold them once. They're throwing it away here. So I guess they are gonna pass it. Now they got us with the run. We're gonna hold them though. And this is such a big third and seven. They did go with the pass. So the slant is wide open. And now they can probably officially run out the clock on us. Unless we hold them here on third and six, which we could have done but nobody was able to get to the running back. He's gonna be gone. That's gonna be game. And the undefeated dream has come to an end. We also lost to Air Force, so I'm just gonna write this season off, and I'm gonna be super salty if we win at BYU, who's number four, and of course we do. We ended up going nine and three for like the third year in a row, and we're also ranked as the 14th best team in the country. Tim Houston had the best season that any quarterbacks had yet for us, and sophomore halfback Michael Woods went for 17 touchdowns. He also had 400 receiving yards, so he's doing something right, but hopefully Hopefully all of that carries over into next year. We're playing in the fight hunger bowl. We end up destroying Arizona State. And Michael Woods was even in the running for winning the Heisman. This is the first time that we finish with double digit wins. And Tim Houston is trying to leave early, but I am going to guarantee that he's a first round pick. I'm also going to say he wants his college degree and that's enough to make him want to stay. Right guard James Mills ended up going in the fourth round. And we're starting to build up some credibility as a school as we have some pro potential now. We also have max attendance and a lot of A pluses in certain categories. Somehow we also got the 30th best recruiting class, and I guess it's because of these two five stars out of Oregon along with this 80 overall quarterback. I'm also going to be honest, I didn't realize how many good quarterbacks we had on this roster until I realized we had three over 90 overall. And in the preseason of our seventh year at Idaho, we are ranked as the preseason seventh best team in the country. This is our best chance at a championship, so I'm honestly just going to give us easy matchups until at Alabama and at BYU later in the year, and let's hope that by the time we get there, we're still undefeated. Well, well, everything went exactly how I expected it to. We didn't lose any of our first eight games, and that means we're one of the top teams in the country right now. If we're ever gonna win at Alabama, this is the year, but of course, it has to be raining. The weather favors their offensive play style while it hurts ours, and that's why they're already up 13 to zero on us. Fortunately, quarterback Tim Houston has started to get into a rhythm, and now he's going for a dot, and that is going to be an interception. All right, let's try that again. We have the ball back, and this time, he is going to sling it, and it's going to be perfectly on the money to Jackson. So we're finally on the board, and we still have a chance to end the half with a bang. The running back is getting open. That ball, again, delivered perfectly, and Woods is going down to the 30. For a very slow start to the game on offense, we're starting to step it up, and Tim Houston delivers a dot. The annoying thing is Alabama always keeps it close, and Greg Brown is killing us. For the third straight year, he is giving us issues, but if we can hold them on the two-point conversion, we'll have an advantage, which we're able to do. Now if we score again, we can take at least a two-point 
second lead and Tim Houston is going deep and his receiver Thomas is wide open. Robert Thomas is making all of the difference, but on the two point conversion, they've read that perfectly. Alabama is such a hard team to beat in this game, but we've held them to a third and goal here and I think we're going to be able to get a stop, maybe even an interception, but since he could only deflect that, we're going down by two. Scoring on Alabama is not easy, but they keep leaving the wheel route open and Woods is going to make one man miss. He's going to go down inside the 10 and this is our chance to take a lead. I'm going to roll out with Tim Houston. He is a little bit slow and please don't get sacked. Okay. But maybe we just needed a little bit of room to work with because here on third and 16. Okay. Never mind. Never mind. We're unfortunately only going to get three points here. And of course, Alabama's going to score. If we can get a stop on the two point conversion though, we'll be fine. And their quarterback's going nowhere. One touchdown wins this game for us. But evidently that is not going to come too easy as Alabama is sending heaters and I have just thrown an interception. Is our season crumbling to an end? What have I done? This is terrible. Now they're going to go with the run here. Their quarterback's breaking a tackle and they're up by two possessions. At this point, I'm not sure if we're ever going to be able to beat Alabama. Maybe if we get some quick points. I mean, Thomas is getting open here. He's making one man miss with his spin move down at the 30. But even if we end up scoring, we're still going to have to go ahead and get a defensive stop. But that's a quick touchdown. The real question is going to end up being, can we hold them or will we not be able to? Their running back is a tank. So my best guess is no. But we've gotten them to a third and five and this time their quarterback's gonna take off he isn't gonna run straight so we're undeservingly getting the ball back with the chance to actually beat Alabama Thomas on the return is gonna get it all the way to midfield and I cannot choke this now I'm just gonna run the ball as much as we can which is working out because I've yet to throw a pass and we're already down to the 25 this is a big third down though I think I had someone open on the slant I probably should have thrown it. I'm just going to take off with Houston. And this fourth and four could change everything. The running back wide open. Holds onto it. Woods down to the 10. And now I'm going with the corner route. It's man-to-man -man coverage all day. We catch it. No. This wide receiver's fat head got in the way of what should have been a touchdown grab. I can run the same play again, but I doubt it works. Never mind. It does. It does. This has been years in the making, but assuming he doesn't return this, which he's not going to do, we're going to beat Alabama and the undefeated season is going to stay alive. BYU ended up going five and four up to this point. So I'm confident we can go in there and win, which we do. And if we lose to Nevada or New Mexico state, we didn't deserve to make it anyways. Here we go. It's the last one. And we are going to officially be 12 and 0. With there obviously not being a conference championship for the independent schools, we're going straight into bowl season and apparently Tim Houston just won the Heisman. He was somehow worse this year than he was last year, but it doesn't matter because Michael Woods dominated and we actually had a thousand yard receiver for I think the first time in this dynasty. Our BCS national championship opponent is going to be Oregon. And of course it's the team with the best jerseys in this game. We've been waiting for this moment for seven seasons and we've gone from playing at the Kibbe Dome to playing here. Alabama gave us so many issues that I feel like we're built for anything. I think we can take down any team. And I went with the play action here because I knew someone would be wide open over the middle. It's Thomas, which puts us in a great position to score pretty easily. Evidently, Oregon thinks they have a kicker that can make it from 60, but that's way off. And if I'm being honest, I really just want to throw this ball up to Robert Thomas. He has been so good and he is going to burn 45 to get down to the five. The offense is moving the ball extremely well so far and they keep going five wide. So I'm going to continue to blitz, which is working one Wonderfully. The game has gone so well for us so far. And once again, our fast receiver is just dusting that corner. Once I looked at the depth chart and realized that Robert Thomas had 94 speed, this became so much easier. And I think Oregon's going to finally score here, but honestly, that's okay. We've done such a good job at holding them. I can't even be upset about it. And they finally found a hole to bust through. The good news is we still have a little bit of time to score, but that sack's going to put Tim Houston out for the rest of the game. And I'm just going to take this game to the half, but that could be extremely bad news for us. Hang on. Is Woods going to get out of there on the end? Never mind. For a split second, I thought he was about to break free, but you know what? They're giving us the option to keep Tim Houston and I don't care what injury he has because he is going to play in this football game and he's going to win this school their first championship. I'm not going to lie. Oregon's defense here in the third quarter has been insane. There's nothing I can do on it, but our kicker has like 95 kick power. So I'm expecting this to go in, which it does. Oregon can technically still come back, but they've spent a long time going down the field. So we're in a pretty good position, assuming we recover this which we do and I'm gonna probably just run around with McCray and burn more clock all we have to do to seal it is pick up one more first down and hopefully this run actually goes for positive yards Woods only goes for three so I'm gonna go with the play action and hope it fakes them out we have a wide open receiver he holds on to it Robert Thomas and that is going to seal the national championship for us it took seven seasons but I finally brought one home to Idaho and let me know in the comments which team you want to see me rebuild next